Okay, a very good evening everyone. Welcome to the Town Council's Community Resources Committee meeting. Uh, this meeting, as with all now, is being held under the new regulations allowing local authorities to meet formally using remote technology, uh, for which our standing orders have been updated to allow this. Uh, the meeting is being streamed live and is available to view on our website. Uh, it is important for everyone participating in this meeting to keep your microphones on mute, please, when you're not speaking to reduce disruption from background noise. Throughout the meeting, councillors should have the chat window open as this will enable you to indicate either when you wish to speak or you wish to leave the meeting. When your name is called, you will need to unmute your microphone and wait for the word live to appear with a red line around your screen and then please ensure that you speak clearly. Uh, most decisions of the committee will be made by general assent or those present. However, if a vote is required, uh, each councillor's name will be read out by the town clerk and you'll be asked to state whether you are for, against or whether you are abstaining. Uh, if at any time the town council's technology fails, we will need to adjourn the meeting for a short period. I will confirm this and ask all those who are present to turn their cameras off and to mute their microphones while the problem is rectified. And I will then confirm when the meeting is to resume. We can only monitor our technology and cannot halt the meeting if a member of the press or public has experiencing or is experiencing technology issues. I will now ask the town clerk to carry out a roll call of all councillors and ask you to confirm that you are present. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Blanchard Cooper, I think is not with us this evening. Uh, Councillor Chase. Present. Councillor Malloy. Present. Councillor Seeks. Present. Councillor Tandy. Present. Councillor Turner. Present. And Councillor Dr Walsh. Present. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. And then we move on to the the uh, agenda, so item one is mobile phones, which we know about, so please just ensure that mobile phones are switched to silent for the duration. Uh, item two is apologies, uh, so the, we will take Councillor Blanchard Cooper's apologies as noted as mentioned by the Assistant Town Clerk. Uh, item three is declarations of interest, so the standing declarations listed on the agenda are noted uh, and Members and officers are reminded to make any other declarations if they become apparent either now or at the appropriate time during the meeting. So I will just pause briefly in case anyone wishes to make any declarations now. Uh, in which case we will take them if, if and when they come up. Item four is the minutes. So pages four to eight of the agenda is the non-exempt minutes from the meeting we held on the 23rd of July 2020. Uh, if everyone is happy with these minutes, we will agree them and I will uh, I will make an appointment to, uh, to sign them in person at a later date and that will be reflected in the minutes. Uh, is the committee happy to accept the minutes as accurate? Yes. Thank you. There is no dissent, so I will sign those when I go in. Uh, item five, chairs report on urgent items. There is an urgent item which has been circulated and I will hand over to the town clerk. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, can I just check before we begin that members have uh, received and had the opportunity to look at the report? Um, this item was uh, prepared and distributed earlier today as it has become apparent that decisions are urgently required regarding this year's Remembrance Sunday and Christmas Lights events. Um, it's becoming clear that the rules on public gatherings are unlikely to be relaxed uh, to the extent that events such as these which traditionally attracts large numbers can take place in their normal format this year. Um, the time is rapidly approaching where decisions are having to be made on what form these events uh, should take in the current circumstances. Um, if it's OK, Chair, um, perhaps it'd be better to deal with um, each event uh, separately. Yep. If I look at uh, Remembrance Sunday to begin with, um, the report explains that uh, the traditional parade and gathering at the War Memorial and church service, um, it's proposed that they're um, replaced by a scale back event um, surrounding uh, some wreath laying at uh, the memorial and uh, a virtual church service. Um, this will be hugely disappointing for many, um, but it, uh, it has to be said that uh, there's no formal decision on the National Act of Remembrance yet. Um, in the current circumstances, the proposals for a different type of event have been set out um, in paragraphs 3.1.7 of the report. 
um, and a delegation to the town clerk is sought to uh, take this forward. The report also recognises that um, the poppy appeal this year, it's going to be extremely hard for um, the British Legion to raise funds through their traditional methods too. Um, and because our event has been scaled back, it does give us the scope if members were minded to, to make a donation on behalf of the town to um, the British Legion poppy appeal this year. Um, I'll pause there and ask members um, if they have any questions or if they are happy to um, approve the delegation that uh, the town clerk be authorised to uh, take um, the plans for this event forward. Yeah, very, very good. Matt. I have Thank, no you. Questions. Thank you. Agreed. Thank you very much. Um, moving on to the Christmas light switch on. Um, just to be clear, the lights um, and the scheme similar to the display last year um, are still booked um, and all the licenses um, are being sought so that the display will still go up. Um, what is unlikely, however, is that we'll be unable to hold the normal switch on event, um, which again is hugely popular um, and a, a great thing for the town centre and traders in particular. Um, so what we're proposing is um, officers are already investigating options to um, still carry out events um, that would continue to promote the high street, support local traders, but in a different way, maximising the internet and social media. Um, as I said, officers are already investigating other ideas and those are set out in paragraphs 3.2.3 uh, to 3.2.7 in that report. Um, so members are invited to consider those, but um, we do need to move quickly if we are to be ready for the festive season. The switch on is planned uh, for the 20th of November so that the lights are there uh, at the normal time. Um, and again, a delegation is sought to allow uh, officers to start investigating alternative plans and to put something in place. Uh, thank you very much. I have uh, Councillor Seeks has asked to speak. Um, I just wondered whether we'd had any progress with the suggestion that we had probably back in May or June about having a drive-in cinema because we'd suggested it when the restrictions were a lot tighter than they currently are and will be. And at Christmas, we, we, we were just saying it might be a bit tight trying to get it organised for summer. So if we couldn't get a summer drive in, that maybe we'd try and get a Christmas one. And I know there's additional costs involved, but we did say even if there was a small fee to buy a ticket because you'd have to have some control of the number of people entering with their cars, that that could still happen. Is that being investigated? Um, I don't know is the short answer, but I can take a note um, and we can take that forward as part of this research. Well, I can see the town clerks there. He might have a response for you. Uh, thanks, Chair. And thanks, Juliet. Um, to a degree it has been, but it hasn't been taken that much further. There are uh, significant issues with it in terms of the way we've been looking at it. Um, the, the idea of St Martin's and um, was one option, but is, it does create exclusion problems in terms of ticketing. We we then actually had the winds taken out of our sails on it slightly because the Littlehampton, uh, oh sorry, the uh, cinema club, cinema from its school, my brain's gone, sorry. The windmill. The, uh, the, the runs out of the windmill. We're right. looking at, do, and, and us, I believe, still looking at doing one themselves, but have been stopped in their tracks um, because of COVID in their and they're only just coming back online again, in, as you know, with the windmill reopening. But they were the, the, in a way, they took it off our hands because they were looking to uh, to do it themselves, which we were we were prepared to support. We'd been talking to them, but it ground to a, a rapid halt. I think when when COVID sent when lockdown descended. I will revisit it though. It's a fair point, and I'll go back to them following this meeting. All right. Thank you very much. So I have Councillor Walsh, then Councillor Turner, then Councillor Malloy. Councillor Walsh. 
I can't. Mr. Walsh, you're muted. Um, yeah, thank you for the paper. It's a sensible way forward. We've got to be pragmatic. We know even this week the regulations or next week are changing yet again. Um, who knows what they'll be by the time we get to Christmas. Um, so I think this is all we can do at this stage. And uh, I'm sorry for everybody involved because it's it's it, it's very time consuming. It's very frustrating. You think you've made some plans and then they suddenly get whipped away and you've got to redraft them. And I feel most of all sorry for um, children and young people um, and families um, who will be impacted by the loss of this one. Uh, but what else can we do? We're in an unprecedented situation. We've got to behave within the law. We've got to make sure the disease is contained and we're likely in the depth of winter to be, you know, at the worst part of uh, what seems to be turning into a, a, a further um, outbreak of the uh, virus. So, yeah, I support the recommendation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Turner. Thank you, Chair. Um, being an optimist, I'd like to think that we, we could be in a slightly different position in in uh, November, which is two months away. Are we in a position that if circumstances should change, which of course they are changing on a weekly basis, sometimes on a daily basis. So are we in a position, should we get nearer to November the 20th, to be able to still go ahead with the light switch on, um, invite, uh, allowing the public to come? Um, you know, have we got a plan that we could still go ahead with it? Is that everything in place that we could still go ahead with it? Should the situation be different? Um, or are we just abandoning it full stop? So, sorry, I'm not fully connected up there, but uh, I think the, the very simple answer is that for every week that goes by, any potential of doing that disappears fast. Um, so if something dramatically changed in the next two or three weeks, we'd probably be able to be, have some capacity to, to revert. But beyond that, we, you, you, you've got to commit at some point. Um, and so we would, you know, we would have no way back then, I think. And, I, and you know, to be honest, in three weeks time, we'll be into October it will be weeks away and I think it would be incredibly optimistic to um, that anything was going to significantly change for the better to enable us to do an event of that size. I think that's the issue with that. Uh, thank you and then Councillor Malloy. Hi, um, I was having a think it would be a real shame to lose some of those things that we have regularly at the Christmas light switch on like the nativity and stuff. Um, and leading up to Christmas, also we have our main shopping weekends. Could we not have something like our normal Christmas Christmas nativity on on a shopping weekend, and not making it an event, but make it that something that's just on the high street that day, so we don't necessarily tell everyone it's going to happen, but for the shoppers that are there, it's something nice, and we don't lose those things that we would normally do. Uh, if I may, chair, the report does say that. Um, officers are working they are contacting the church to see what can be done i think the balance with all of this is going to be the you can't really be um attracting large gatherings that's going to be the main thing really and whether or not they themselves feel it's safe to do it but um, officers are going to contact the baptist church and um, to see if they can do um perhaps a virtual nativity at least so that we can have something to display and I think that's going to be the case with all of this whatever we can do via social media and the internet to still provide something for people to view and enjoy that's what we will do okay thank you uh, thank you this, uh, no one else is asking to speak so I will simply ask if uh, members are content to endorse the recommendation that is outlined on the and the content of the report which is yeah, so, so delegations to the town clerk to um, deal with arrangements for the Remembrance Sunday uh, event and approve the grant to the poppy appeal this year of £1,000 on behalf of the town. Yes. 
Thank you. And uh, lastly, um, the cancellation of the uh, live public switch on event um, and the authority is delegated to the town clerk in consultation with the chair of the committee to uh, agree additional um, elements of the festive pack package to um, ensure that we do have some form of uh, event this year. Agreed. Thank you very much, Chair. Sorry, right. pain. So Is it possible just to amend it to say that we'll all be included? So because it is so vital, the sort of Christmas for the feel good factor and for everybody that it's not just Peter and Billy that have the conversations about what we're doing for Christmas as you know, just so we're all kept in the loop and in the conversation. We can we will keep members in the loop. Um, I think it's, it's difficult to get everybody's views unless it is very, very quick because we do need to start <coughs> making these plans. Um, I see the town clerks there. Thanks for the positive reflection. So uh, it will be driven by health and safety and risk assessments. Uh, that's, that is the bottom line on this. It will not be done through what people like necessarily. It will be done, the bottom line will be on the risk assessment. That's why, as the, as the proper officer and responsible officer for, for on that front, that's why there's a straight delegation to me. Um, I think what I will encourage members to do, and uh, and I, perhaps I didn't pick it up in this report, and I apologise for that, is encourage members to come forward. And I will do an email after this with any ideas that they have. I think I'd rather do it that way around, see what we can incorporate in liaison with, with the chair than try and do something and then try and go out to everybody and see what thoughts they've got, particularly if it's very constrained in the first place under the health and safety. But I think it's a really, it's, I would like to involve them. and very much I'd like to get their input into the ideas because we're not sort of sitting here with the answer to all things and don't pretend to. So if the members are happy with that, I'm quite happy to, to arrange to email out for ideas over the next fortnight or so. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Thanks. Will all um, councillors be invited to the uh, reclaying on um, Armistice Day? Um, well, stop. Sorry, it was there. And it, sorry, there it was there, and there it went. The red bit. The <laughs> um, the um, no is probably the answer. Um, the um, but it will depend on what numbers I can get and what distancing I can get around that around the memorial. I'm not going to sit here. The easy answer for me would say, well, yes, of course, and then retract. I'd say it's unlikely at the moment with the amount of other people that would potentially be there. Yeah, OK. Yeah. I would say that um, there's also plenty of uniform groups that would like to do the same, but numbers are going to be an issue. So where possible, we will. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, everyone. So. That is, uh, I'm taking that as the dissent. I think there was no no dissent apart from a couple of points which the town clerk has addressed and taken on. So we will accept that and we will move on to uh, item six, which is the uh, public forum. So in accordance with the remote meeting protocol, which has been introduced by the town council, any member who wishes to address the uh, council or any of its committees during remote meeting should have emailed their submission to us or one clear day before the meeting. And I will ask, the town clerk or the assistant town clerk to advise us if there are any. Uh, there is one chair. We've received a representation from Mr Chester who asked that uh, in light of the uh, report on the front of the Littlehampton Gazette that there may be no Littlehampton ferry service at all until a COVID-19 vaccine is found. Has any money been paid or is agreed to be paid to the operators of the ferry for the years 20 to 2020 to 2021? Uh, he also states that he noticed recently that the ferry service across the Thames between Tick Twickenham and Richmond upon Thames using a similar boat was running and doing well. Could not at least the ferry be hired out for river tours um, for household bubbles? Um, in response, Chair, um, we thank Mr Chester for his questions about the ferry, although it's responsibility for the ferry falls within the remit of the Town Council's Policy and Finance Committee. Um, we're happy to respond tonight. Firstly, uh, to say no money has been paid to the ferry operators in 2020 in line with the service funding agreement. The Town Council has secured the mooring on the East Bank so that it can be used 
uh, by the ferry and this will go into the early part of the 2021 season. Questions about the use of the ferry outside of its running for the town council has always been permitted um, and they can do other trips and make to make the service more viable. Um, I'm sure that the council would have no problems in using the East Bank mooring for such use. Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you very much indeed. And then we turn to uh, item seven, which is the officer's report. Uh, this begins on page nine of your agenda, and the uh, I think we're going to alternate between the town clerk and the assistant town clerk to take us through. I believe 7.1 is the museum periodic report, which is on pages 9 to 22, and uh, this is the assistant town clerk. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so members have um, got from the periodic report, which focuses on the work of the museum since June uh, and also shows the positive impact of the new website and social media activity in terms of public engagement. Um, there are also some acquisitions to consider, but the main thrust of the report surrounds the progress with the collections documentation project and the work that is about to begin on the museum forward plan. Um, section six of uh, the report shows the good level of progress that's been made in reaching the target set by the member working group uh, when the project began for recording artefacts. Um, it also highlights the work that's now taking place to uh, digitise the accession registers and why this is so important. Um, the action plan at Appendix C in your papers shows the overall progress with the project. And now that we're in the last six months of the collections documentation officer role, um, work has been started on drafting the full plan for the museum. Um, this includes a staffing review, as mentioned in the report, and also building on the work from the project uh, and widening the museum's appeal. This is explained in section eight of the report, um, which highlights an opportunity for grant funding, which could help the museum achieve these objectives and for which we are seeking approval to progress. Um, I'll hand over to uh, members for questions, Chair. Um, if I may. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Dr. Walsh. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm really delighted with the progress on the um, uh, digitisation. Uh, three quarters of the way to the target, which I think is excellent progress. Um, I know often the last bit is the most difficult bit in anything like this. So I hope there won't be any you know, difficulties or slowing down in, in, in the process. I'm looking at the graph, it's pretty um, uh, on page 14, um, it's interesting to see the different tour progress across different years, but clearly last year and this year has been the most significant um, um, catch up, as it were. We're, we're. we're nearly there, and this is delighted. Uh, this is a per particularly a great tribute. Um, the one person who really drove this was Tony Squires, and it's really good to see this as be his one of his lasting memorials to the town that the uh, um, the storage and the um, uh, logging um, and digitalization digitization now of all our asset uh, all our um, assets um, will be completed. So delighted with that um, and with the rest of the report as well. I'm delighted that the reception is going to be um, if it hasn't already been. Uh, is being um, up updated and that we're opening to the public um, within ever-changing guidelines as much as we can. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I have no one else wishing to speak at this stage, so speaking very slowly, just in case someone is desperately typing, but they don't seem to be, we will move therefore to the recommendations uh, as the uh, assistant town clerk has outlined. So the recommendations are on page number nine and that is to note the uh, updated progress with the uh, documentation project and the action plan. Um, the acquisitions are on page, I'll quickly look, uh, page. Can I, can, I, can I move that we accept the recommendations to acquire or not acquire right. as they are listed? Yeah, thank you very much, that's helpful. So the, I think the, with the proposal is, sorry, to take the recommendations on block as listed on page nine, including the acquisitions. Is that agreeable? 
Agreed. 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 Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chair. We move, uh, we move on to 7.2, which is on pages 23 to 29. This is a community resources report. And again, I will hand over to the Assistant Town Clerk to introduce. Thank you, Chair. Um, just uh, briefly, obviously, members will have had the opportunity to read the report. And just to explain, this aims to provide you with an update on uh, some of the work and the progress with the various projects as they relate to the remit of the work of this committee. Um, some have already been superseded by a report earlier on in the meeting and there are three recommendations for the committee to consider. However, before we do that, um, I'd like to hand over to our community resources officer, Mike Greer, who's prepared a, a brief presentation explaining the key areas of work in the portfolio. Thank you. Can I just check that everyone can see um, my presentation? Yes, absolutely. Yes, thank you. OK, so this report starts with um, outlining some of the works that have been undertaken off the back of the um, grant aid that we uh, had previously, previously issued to community groups within the town. Um, Little Hampton Heritage Railway uh, have managed to lay 120 metres of track replacements parallel to the swimming pool, um, aided by the kind support of Little Hampton Town Council Grant. Um, these works, as you can see from the pictures, involve digging out and removing old rotten sleepers, uh, relaying track bed and inserting new sleepers and rail. Um, this is obviously uh, very hard work and um, wouldn't have been achievable had they not been awarded the grant that they achieved. Um, Cancer United, at the start of lockdown, uh, when their CU Fitter gym, gym program had to close, they immediately transferred to an online platform. They delivered resistant tubes as every CU Fitter member. Working from home, it became so popular they had to even more demand than they normally would have had for the class. This meant they very quickly ran out of resistant bands. Receiving the funding enabled them to buy 100 bands, which is, they've now started to distribute. Um, they have also given bands to those members who didn't want to work out at home and are now, now able to come back to the gym. Many of their members have been impacted by COVID-19 financially as well as mentally, so they are aware of this is paramount importance for them to keep engaged through a media where they could still interact with those who would normally see it, they would normally see at classes. Um, and then they give thanks at the bottom of that um, paragraph. Food Bank, uh, they managed to buy 2,500 boxes. One box is one week's supply of food for one person and use the remainder of the grant towards £2,500 they spent buying food to replenish stocks. Um, and these stocks have been used to, uh, in part, provide 34,000 meals. They purchased equipment for the delivery system, which had to be set up in order to protect social distancing and people needing to be shielded at home. Um, this grant made a vital contribution to the food bank's work and efforts during lockdown. Rosemead Park. Um, we've looked at the designs um, and after Sutcliffe Clay have been appointed, we've reviewed the designs with some improvements. Um, we've added in um, a wet ball ladybird for interactive play. We have selected rubber mulch to offer a textured surface throughout. We've included a goal end and a basketball hoop. The trampoline has been expanded and now has a large trampoline and allowing more interactive play. And the whole park has taken on a theme. Um, this theme is in line with the park and its surrounding, offering more visual stimulation. You can see um, as a result of the, some of the items expanding, um, some of the uh, setup has slightly changed in its orientation. Um, and just off of the pathway now, we have many sensory items. Um, and these items include a miniature, miniature sensory flower, a play fence with a mirrored uh, theme and also has a, a trumpet. Um, and we have uh, other themes throughout, uh, bees and flowers. Allotments. 
We have worked hard over the last few months to ensure this vital service continues operation and allows local residents access to open space to cultivate crops and tackle isolation and loneliness. From lockdown 23rd of March 2020 until 21st of August 2020, there were 91 requests to go on the waiting list. During the same period in 2019, we had 36 requests. Below, I've listed a table um, that outlines our current occupancy at all the sites, which you can see is almost at 100%. Over the last few months, we've not been able to undertake meetings with Lauga. Communications with allotment holders has been via email or over the phone. In order to adapt to the current pandemic, we have been working on a newsletter to be issued to all allotment holders to give a new method of contact and ensure updates that are issued to all. Uh, this is still at very early stages and we will be linking with Lauga on this, but I've given a snippet of um, the first part of that uh, newsletter that we'll be hoping to issue soon. Southfields Jubilee Centre. We have worked hard with local groups to get them utilising Southfields Jubilee Centre. We have ensured the centre complies with COVID-19 government advice. We have worked with all the groups to ensure sessions can be delivered and residents have options to participate in essential activities for health and wellbeing. We now have 14 bookings slot filled um, and to achieve this, we've completed risk assessments and additional guidance documents work with groups to undertake session specific risk assessments, moved all bookings to allow only one group in at any one time and space between sessions for deep cleaning, upgraded signage and marketing at the centre um, and kept constant communication with groups to ensure track and trace measures that are in place. Holiday activities. During the summer break, we have been delighted to get some of our holiday activity programmes up and running. Freedom Leisure delivered a range of activities and 81 children aged between five and nine engaged in a variety of free activity sessions. Point Rocks managed to deliver nine free dance classes to children aged between two and 12, and these sessions deliver classes for 66 children. The New, new, new Youth Centre. Um, we continue to progress uh, on the New Youth Centre. Uh, we went out to tender and saw seven prospective bids and a large process to review and assess bids on quality and price. We've appointed uh, an employer's agent to manage all aspects of the project. The successful bid was Bacchus, who have managed projects locally and one of note is the WAVE. Working on design and planning requirements with a view to submit planning by October 2020 and we're currently uh, engaging with Aaron Youth Projects and this will form part of the planning application. Uh, and this is just a summary of some of the work that we've been undertaking. Thank you. Uh. Oops. There we go. The dangers of muting your microphone during the presentation. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michael. That was really helpful and informative. So there are uh, two substantive points and then there are others. So if the committee is happy, we'll just take the two that need actual agreement and comment first. So the first one is uh, item or recommendation one, which is to note the progress of the delivery of the new play area at Rosemead, as Michael has outlined. Uh, so I will pause if any member wishes to speak. And Councillor Turner. There's a surprise. Um, I want to um, have it recorded on the minutes that I'm very unhappy about the fact that there is no sensory path included in this. I was under the impression that on the consensus of, of, of vote at the meeting that it was to include a sensory path and this has not been included and I'm very, very unhappy about it. I still have a copy of the letter from Lloyd, the nine and a half year old who asked specifically for more sensory things to be included. Um, and I think a sensory path was 
is, should really have been part of it. I believe that a, a goal and a netball post or a basketball post is going to encourage 16 to 18 year olds to this park and it's supposed to be for up to 14 year olds and we should be doing more for the younger element rather than the older element, especially with the, the, the new youth centre being, uh, being built. Uh, so that's my view. I'm very, very unhappy. Uh, just to say, Chair. Uh, yes, yeah. sorry. Uh, that's noted, Chair. I would draw members' attention to um, paragraph 3.2.3 of the report, which endeavours to explain the rationale behind um, keeping the pathway itself um, as free as possible, but the introduction of additional sensory items closer to it to make the path, uh, sorry, to make the whole play area as inclusive as possible. But Councillor Turner's comments will be noted. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I've got Councillor Malloy, then Councillor Dr Walsh. So Councillor Malloy. Hello, I'm just going to second Andrew on that about the path. And I do understand that we have to keep pathways accessible for everyone. But in my head, there may have been a path coming off that was sensory. And I feel that the ladybird will not get as widely used as what a sensory path would have been. Thank you, Councillor Dr Walsh. Sorry, my mind was up. I'm following good practice of turning it off the whole time and I keep forgetting <laughs> to turn it on again. Um, yes, I support that. I think it is the right way forward. And if we can actually find a way to include that, even at this late stage, I would be very supportive of that. Um, I, I think it's an important element and I'm sure where there's a will, there's a way. It hasn't started yet and it's a relatively small change. And I think we ought to actually uh, proceed with that. Uh, uh, count. Uh, I've got Councillor Turner ask Councillor Turner, is that a comeback? Do you wish to come back again? Yes, got, please. Yeah, Councillor Turner. Uh, if I look, thank you, Chair. If I look at the plan, that there is um, two paths in, in this plan, a zigzag one that goes through the middle, and there is a smaller one. And I think that smaller one could be the sensory path. Um, I've looked online and you can see dozens of pictures of sensory paths. In fact, some people have sensory paths in their back gardens, so they don't need to be particularly expensive. But I think that that particular area on the picture, um, I think it's, I don't know if it's easy to see it. It's this one here. Yes, I agree. Along the bottom, I, that that's I, a small path that could be made into a sensory path. I agree with Andrea on that. Thank you, James. Uh, I've got the assistant town clerk is going to come in at this point. Um, just I, sorry, sorry, I, there are other people to speak, but I'm just going to let Juliet come in just in case it answers questions that are still to come. Only to say, Chair, that the scheme has been agreed now and uh, the budget that's been allocated um, has been taken up by the scheme. So the opportunity to change and introduce uh, any additional items is no longer available, I'm afraid. Thank you. We will go to Councillor. Uh, the town clerk has appeared as if he wishes to speak. No, I, I need, I'm sorry, I was uh, only going to add, just to clarify, <clears throat> what members could do is, of course, we can add it at a future date and we can, if, if members so wish, then, um, I mean, you know, but what's been said is it has been confirmed. Um, we haven't got the budget there at the moment to do anything, but we have a budget round coming up. So, um, I, I and without any doubt at some point also in the future the county council land to the south to, to the south to the north even of the uh, of the playground will come up and at some point one of the things that we decided with this playground was it needed to be expandable anyway to um, accommodate hopefully some section 106 funding out of that development so um, I, just, I just thought I'd add, add in as a bit of extra chair could we get a price for the introduction of a sensory part so we just know when we come to budget time? Uh, yep. Thank you. Uh, I've lost where I am. I, uh, Councillor Seeks, I can't remember if I called you or not. 
Um, I haven't yet. It's probably no. not appropriate <laughs> now because I was just going to say in relation to removing the basketball and football bits that given that the high school is there and that's the park that all of the high school users, you know, the students use, then we should keep that as well and accommodate teenagers because the reality is that they're hanging out over there anyway. So you might as well have something fun and productive to be doing rather than just standing around chatting. So, but it's, it's too late anyway, so it's a bit of a mute point. <laughs> No. All points are welcome. Councillor Chase. Yeah, it's, it's all obviously being cleared up now, but I'd just like to say I do agree with everyone else about the sensory path and for whatever reasons it is disappointing. Thank you very much. So uh, the I think Councillor Dr Walsh has made the point about finding out a price is that that okay Jules noted yeah that's noted thank you chair perfect thank you very much so that is that recommendation recommendation two is the one that requires a decision so this is regarding uh, allotment rental fees so on page 24 uh, this is in paragraph 3.3 .3, so normally obviously allotment rental fees would be set or a recommendation would come from the allotments working group which hasn't met so the committee is being asked to agree the proposed uh, allotment rental fee and this is for january 2022 i believe may i say something of course you may <laughs> thank, thank you chairman um thank you for appending the table on page 27 of the different percentage increases the difference between any of the, any of them is incredibly small fortunately they're 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 all in, counted in pennies rather than pounds uh, for the um, average um, plots um, uh, and I'm looking at the large ones particularly but if you go down to small they're even smaller so given the rate of inflation that the rest of our budget um, is bearing for our staff and everything else I would think that we actually need to be applying uh, an, an increase of either the two or two and a half percent. And I think I'm minded to actually go for the two and a half percent. I think that's not unreasonable. And the the increase is from seven twenty five, seven point seven seven pounds twenty five to seven pounds fifty nine per twenty five per, per square meter, which means a uh, a small, a large plot would go up from seventy-two pounds fifty to seventy-five pounds eighty-five, and a small plot would go up from, um, sorry, a starter plot would go up from eighteen pounds thirteen to eighteen pounds ninety-six. I, I don't think any of those sums are exorbitant by any stretch of the imagination, and I think we've got to, um, you know, the, the trouble is if you if you lag behind each year. At some stage, somebody's going to come along and say, gosh, we've got to have a catch up exercise. And then you then suddenly build in a, a, a much bigger percentage increase. So I'm always in favour of actually matching increases to the um, um, ongoing rate of inflation, the current rate of inflation, rather than pretending it's not happening and then playing catch up later. So I think I'd probably opt for 2.5. Uh, thank you very much and I will I will take the proposal of 2.5 as a proposal and the assistant town clerk is just going to clarify something for us I believe. Just to be clear that um, the rate that it will be going up to in January 2021 is £7.40 so you are looking at increases on the £7.40 price so 2% for example would go up to £7.55 per rod and two and a half pounds fifty-nine. back yeah. to even smaller than uh, Councillor Walsh indicated earlier. Thank you for pointing that out. That aids my case. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so the, the proposal is that a 2.5% increase be proposed. Is that is uh, a member willing to second that? I am. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And then if no one else wishes to speak, I will ask if that is the general assent of the meeting for a 2.5% rise in January 2022. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Now, is it just to note the rest? Yes, yeah, just to note the rest of the report, which I will take as a given. <laughs> Unless anyone does want to disagree. Thank Can you. we move to 
agenda item, the next item, which is the holiday activity support and service funding agreement update. And before I hand over to the assistant town clerk, I will just declare an interest as the secretary and treasurer at the Keystone Centre who received one of these grants. Juliet. Thank you, Chair. Um, the earlier presentation has already touched on uh, some of the elements of this report, which uh, gives members an overview of how difficult it's been for some of our groups to deliver their projects. Um, as Mike mentioned in his presentation, there are some positives out there, um, and even with the challenges of the changing government guidance, some of the groups um, do and still anticipate being able to deliver their schemes. They're just not in a position to say when at the moment. Um, in terms of the holiday activities for sports uh, grants, um, one group only um, is seeking an extension to the time limit for using their funds. And in terms of the service funding agreements, uh, the position is as explained uh, in the report, really, in uh, section uh, 3.1.6. Um, and the table that's attached to that report um, gives some detail in terms of where these groups are at uh, when it comes to delivering on the service funding agreements. Um, we continue to uh, maintain contact with them and uh, monitor these and obviously we will come back with uh, a further update in October when it may become clearer uh, if further action uh, needs to be taken here. Um, happy to take any questions Chair um, with just the one recommendation for uh, consideration to the extension of a grant for the Friends of Musebrook Park. Thank you very much. Uh, if anyone wishes to speak, uh, Councillor Dr Walsh. I support that to recommend uh, the request from the Friends of Musebrook Park. Um, their difficulties have been well, well um, enunciated and spelt out here as well. And it's a, it's a relatively small request and I think we should accede to it. Thank it's you. A division and uh, they do wonderful work and it is so well received by the public. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Seeks. Hello, I just wanted to check what the standard process was because I know we had a conversation about this before, but it might have been in relation to other types of grants of what should we do? And we're, I'm sure we had a meeting where we said the standard protocol should be that the money's returned and then people reapply. I just want to make sure that we're applying the same rules to everybody. So it doesn't mean we won't have the money available for when they are ready to start, but we keep the cash until people are ready to actually use it. But was that for different types of grant where we have that as standard policy? If if I may, Chair, my recollection was um, when uh, this current council came in, one of your priorities and one of your initial discussions was about um, the grant schemes. Um, and you did review them and I think that was part of that conversation then but um, that particular aspect of it wasn't agreed. We just when discussed we, it. Okay. Yeah, when we allocate them we do um, provide them with the funding assuming that they have provided us with the necessary information. The only time we don't is if we're awaiting uh, specifics regarding their applications. Uh, perfect, thank you. So no one else is indicating to speak. So is the committee happy to agree the recommendation that is that the uh, grant for Friends of Music Park be extended for a further year? Agreed. 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 Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. And then uh, pages 36 and 37 is item 7.4, which is visitor maps. And I believe this is the town clerk. I can take that one forward to start off with Chair. Okay. Um, the report is um, pretty self-explanatory in terms of uh, the background there. Um, this is just um, a suggestion for members to consider which outlines a proposal for a, a map and dispensers for the town of Littlehampton. 
Um, I will hand over to the town clerk uh, as referenced in the report regarding a potential crossover of this idea with proposals that have been looked at for town centre events initiatives. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Juliet. Um, so before I go any further, I'm just sitting here jotting down to myself that uh, because this matter would almost certainly need to be considered over at Aaron and by the Regeneration Subcommittee, the Council Six probably wants to give a declaration of interest as chair of the Little Anton Regen Subcommittee. But um, I wasn't planning on going through Regen with it at all. I thought it would just be a purely town centre initiative. So, yeah, no, it would be a town centre project rather than a regeneration well, project. It's, okay. clearly, it's, it's all on Aaron land and uh, and all within their remit. So um, they're certainly going to have some, some major say in anything that might happen. Um, so so that's the first thing. The second but the bit I was going to talk about, and I'll let uh, Councillor Seeks talk about the map and the dispensers and so on, is that um, uh, it was the fact that there is a potential that this could overlap slightly with another initiative. This is the classic CLC committee doing one thing and policy and finance doing another. Um, the Policy and Finance Committee is taking forward a number of initiatives for, which is jointly funded with the District Council um, starting this October with some exciting 3D arts which we'll be reporting in to Policy and Finance um, in a week on Tuesday. Um, but there are a number, it's going through in three phases and members may well have seen the report that split it into three phases um, in the last cycle. The one of the things that's being lined up for the second phase, and this does involve both the visitor, uh, so visitors to the leisure side of things and tourism, as well as to the retail centre, because it's going to link into some additional funding that the District Council are looking to spend in that direction with regard to uh, the enclosure of the look and see, members might recall, um, is an interactive app which um, has been very popular, seems to be very popular elsewhere will really be focused at linking up um, the various parts of the town and also and trying to link up things such as different ends of the beach, uh, trying to link the, the perennial problem of linking the riverside to the seafront to the town centre. Um, and I'm just, and it will involve maps and locations and so on. So I've just mentioned that the two of them are going to be potentially running in parallel if we're not careful. The other thing I just wanted to flag up is that we used to have a very similar map um, to that, that we used to, um, uh, Councillor Dr Walsh probably recall this anyway, yeah. that we used to do in partnership with Harbour Park as a visitor, as a visitor guide that went around the country, um, which was similarly illustrated. Um, not the same, but in a similar sort of style, I should say. And uh, we agreed to get rid of that and create the Visit Little Hampton website because it was a more um the 21st century so that's the end that's so doesn't mean we can't do it it's just a reflection on what happened in the past but um, i just needed members to be aware of both of those points now i'll shut up and i let councillor six explain what she's proposing okay so the there's two separate elements to it so if you take away the visitor map thing for now and park that the artwork I sent for Tom Wynne Jones was saying that maybe we could have an art installation of having some big panels because you might have seen that Worthing had um, some street art this summer and it got a lot of press and lots of sort of good reporting on it and I think the will sort of happened by chance rather than planning and that's been really good for the town and for getting a feeling that there's something happening here so I wanted to make sure that next year if the wheel doesn't come back, that there's still something that's happening. So it was a case of, could we have some big vinyl panels in a couple of locations that's an art installation, but also encourages people to move around because we've identified that the first bit of the beach gets really chocker because people come out of that car park and go straight to the first couple of bays because that's where the toilets are and the kiosks are because they're not aware that down at Norfolk Gardens there's also a cafe in Norfolk Gardens and a toilet block but if you had something that you actually wanted to look at that was a big art installation you'd see the various sort of points along the seafront that there are things to see and do and other facilities whereas if you have a notice board with a bit of paper in and a load of things you're not going to stop as a tourist and look at that so it was to get some PR and also to do that job. And then I worked at, obviously at Chichester Bid and that's where the visitor map is. And I was surprised as anybody that 
people do take them and we had to constantly go around refilling those. And the previous map, from what I can understand, was located in a couple of locations where you'd have to know they were there and go and pick them up, whereas these ones are at the pay machines in car parks. Every single pay machine has a visitor map dispenser, so you would go and get one of those out if you were coming and you'd never been to Littlehampton. Um, I didn't know about the app, but I am wary because part of my old job was looking into multiple apps that are used across town centres through the Business Improvement District and Loyal Free was good, but I know lots of towns have had apps that have been and gone. And from a visitor point of view, you're not going to download an app when you've come to the beach for the day, but you might pick up a flyer that tells you where Pier Road is for fish and chips. So you're never going to download an app as a visitor once you're actually arrived. So I think that's trying to do too many things of trying to support the high street and the tourist economy. And retail is going to carry on having a really tough time. But the only sector that is growing at the moment is the domestic tourist economy. So it makes sense to really try and max out what we can from our tourists because that's increased this year. I think our district's increased, it's been 16% increase. And if we still have coronavirus next year, it's likely to remain the same. So that's a sector where we know it's growing rather than declining. So I just think it makes sense to support that sector. I'll shut up now. <laughs> Thank you, I think that was, really helpful as an explanation. Uh, Councillor Dr Walsh. Uh, thanks uh, Mr Chairman um, and thanks for the paper and thanks for Emily's contribution. Um, I'm entirely supportive of the um, uh, vinyl artworks. I think those, those are a really good idea um, because uh, because for the reasons Emily indicated, Councillor Six indicated that um, uh, visitors don't always see what's available and don't know what's available and uh, as we know historically over many years but it's accentuated in recent years with people losing the use of their legs and just going to the nearest bit of a beach from their shortest walk from the car to the beach if we can point them to the use the whole of our seafront from um, uh, the river to um, uh, Norfolk Road it would really be um, very very uh, good for the businesses, very good for the other users on the beach, spreading everybody out, and uh, uh, so good, good use. So I'm entirely supportive of that. I'm I'm not so keen now on the on the paper maps. Um, my my children, grandchildren, whenever they want anything these days, what's the first thing they do? They look at their phone. They don't go and say, "Oh, please, can I look at a guidebook?" or "Please, can I get a map?" or "Please, can I do this?" The the, the current usage of, of paper maps. In fact, I think people are losing the ability to re read maps. Um, mo most people can't even sort of know which way they're orientated, never mind sort of finding out their way from it. So I, I think people are actually using um, Google Maps, um, every other map application going. And I think that's the way that we should be making sure that ours are, um, is up to date, um, get, get, gets, all the information, gets all the information on it, points to people, got the right links to the uh, attractions, the visitors, advertising if needed on them as well, so that everything is there um, in the way that people are now used to experiencing it. And so I, I'm not really in favour of having uh, paper map dispensers because I think they are, uh, the reason we discontinued them in 2014, so we're talking about, you know, six years ago, um, is that they were not being used then. And how much worse has the situation got since then? Uh, much, much uh, uh, the, the, I shouldn't have used the word worse. Um, the, the shift from paper to digital has been incredible um, in that, and that's the way most people go. So I'm not supportive of that. I'm very supportive of the of the vinyl artworks. Uh, thank you very much. I have. Uh, if I if I take everyone who has questions, and if I come to you last, Councillor Seeks, if that's all right to respond, Councillor Turner is next. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm very supportive of the vinyl uh, panels. I think that's an excellent idea. I have to say I'm torn about the maps. Um, we do still have 
a number of dinosaurs in the uh, in our own generation that um, that don't use technology. Um, although I do, but I there's still a lot of it I don't understand and don't use. Uh, the younger generation, yes, they use it a lot. Um, but would it be the youngsters or would it be the older generation that determines where they're going to go? So I really don't know. I agree we do need to spread out people more on the seafront and I think the new surf shop when it eventually opens and cafe opposite the wave will draw people up that end as well um, and I th but I think we need more publicity of Musebrook Park and the surf shop and, and cafe when that opens so whether a map would actually indicate that and and the train because I think the um, the heritage train should attract much, much more in the way of uh, visitors uh, uh, as well as Norfolk Park. But I'm just not sure how, whether a map would be the way to to generate that or not. I'm not sure, but I'm certainly um, agree with you about the the, uh, the vinyl panels. I think that's an excellent idea. I don't know what else to say. Thank you, uh, Councillor Malloy. Hi, I just want to say that I really love the artwork that Emily's given as an example for these maps um, and I really agree with the vinyl, vinyl boards. Um, it, I think it would be nice to see some sort of, a, I know we've touched on this before, a big map on a wall in town like for instance yep. the side of the exotic shop. Yes. Because I know what I do is when I'm out and I see a map I take a picture of the map so it's on my phone. <laughs> So I just snap a picture and then I've got it to just refer to all the time without the paper because Maggie chucks it on the floor and stuff like that. Um, but if we could push and I guess if it's painted, it is easy to amend. If we just got those key places on there, we could always add in little pop up. It's like get a wheel painted on and then paint over it again and stuff like that. I think that would be quite a nice way to do it. And it's as you come out of the train station and through the alleyway from the car park. If that's ever a possibility, I just an idea. <laughs> Great idea. Uh, Councillor Chase. Yeah, I'd just like to say I'm fully supportive of the vinyl art. If they were put in the right locations, they would and advertised correctly, they would automatically draw people into those locations. Um, go to Andrew's comment on the miniature railway, they've built their own steam train now, so that is going to become another natural attraction when it reopens. But yeah, the by the wall art spotted at, placed at um, specific locations will naturally draw people through and we can, and it will actually, we can guide them to where we want them to go. And yes, we've had a on tourists this year. We have had a very good increase, but um, that was just basically down to the weather and COVID. Like we are always, if we get the weather, we are always going to have a busy tourist time. So our tourist economy is totally reliant on the weather. Thank you very much. I think that. Uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Turner has a question as well. Sorry, um, I want to um, to agree with uh, Michelle. I think the idea of a map outside of the station, but I think we could have one um, in several locations. Um, so instead of having a printed map and and having a dispensers, if we had a map at say at the end of the pier, um, another one by the East Beach Cafe, another one in Norfolk Park with an actual layout of what is in the area for people to see, then it would uh, resolve the, itch, the issue of having printed maps. Um, but people would be able to go to those big notice boards and see what's in the area. Um, the other thing that's occurred to me is that if we had these paper maps, um, they're going to throw them away when they're not wanted anymore. So it's going to increase our waste and rubbish, which we also already have a problem with. Um, so I would suggest that that would be a, a way around that instead. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you very much. And then uh, I will go back to Councillor Seeks. Thank you. I have made a long list of different things. Um, so I'm not overly, sort of, if we lose the maps, I'm not going to lose any sleep or cry afterwards. But <laughs> I just wanted to say that I was surprised. And when they told me when I joined the bids that they still do printed maps, I was like, oh, come on, nobody must use those. But they did have people come in, as I say, and refill them. So maybe one day in the future, you know, we can revisit it. But the main cost is going to be the artwork. So once we get the artwork produced, we can then the sort of printing onto the panels, I think will be the secondary cost. And yeah, I 100% agree that we should have them as you sort of come through the car park at the seafront where the bulk of the tourists arrive, but also down on the side of the cafe at Norfolk Gardens, you know, all of those places could have it on. And it should include the other side of the river to say that we've got lovely sand dunes and another cafe over there so that hopefully in the future when we do have the ferry running and for that to then extend all the way down to include the new sports centre and Musebrook Park because that's got a cafe and toilet so if you did want to be further away and that that's where the dogs can go in the summer as well so yeah I'm glad that you're all on board and in just in relation to the tourism our domestic tourism before Covid was increasing but I was told with uh, districts that our share of tourism out of tourism economy was shrinking while it was growing nationally so we do need to make sure that we take care of that and it has to grow so I don't think we can just be complacent of if it's sunny they will come because we are competing with other towns for that so it's nice to get a bit of a buzz about all the things we've got and I also would like to have Gavin the seal included as well <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry I didn't about... hear that last sentence, um, Chairman, to have some, uh, something else included as well. Gavin the Gavin, Sill, he's got his own Gavin Facebook page. Oh, yes, Gavin, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm a great fan of Gavin. <laughs> uh, right, I'm going to, I'm looking to the town clerk or the assistant town clerk if they have a, a good enough steer. Yeah, it's, um, what we'll do with that, Chair, is we will, obviously, we've got a priorities um, discussions looming up at PNF on week on Tuesday which was just an update on it. But the biggest issue is funding. Uh, but we'll work up some options and put them into the cost and put them into the budget round share. Perfect. Um, well, I would, sorry, there's two other things I noticed. Yeah. You asked me a very specific question on the way forward, really. But um, there's two other things that I should notice. About whether or not the wheel comes back, which we all hope it does, the town centre events plan or proposed not forward is to have a major thing in the town as part of phase three. So I just want to mention that anyway, um, just as a, it's got nothing to do with the art, but it's just picking up the point you made. Um, and the, um, that was one of the points I was just going to have here. Yeah, we, we must remember the cases in all of this, um, that you're going to put these maps, if sorry, if you go down the maps route, they have cases and cases are hugely expensive. Um, and I only know that from our notice boards and, and wincing. I know they're different, but they're not so different that uh, uh, you do. What I'm wondering, and I have to admit, I should know the answer, so I'm almost asking myself the question, um, is that we had a map, and I don't know if it's there anymore. We used to have a town map in the Dermatime Garden facing out from the Manor House. Now, I am showing my age here. Someone's going to, when I get back to the office, someone's going to say it was removed in 2007 or something, but um, it was, um, but it was quite a useful map, and I don't you recall why if it disappeared it may well be there covered in oak but that was quite a popular point for people to, to do as, as, as well there because it, it was close to the museum and places where people came in at the end of the high street so I, I might just reinvestigate what happened to the town map in the first place I promise I didn't steal it <laughs> but otherwise yeah it's really good steering we'll take it through the cycle chair fine um can I just report that the Little Hampton Big Wheel, sorry, Chairman, um, yeah. uh, we've just today extended, um, it was supposed to be going this weekend, um, it's going to be extended to the end of the month, so it stays in Little Hampton until the end of September. Hopefully this um, good weather will continue or sufficient of it to continue to bring the tourists here. Uh, whether we get it all next year or not, uh, we don't know yet. I am hope that we do because I think it looks great there. It's been a good draw and it really does help put Little Hampton on the map. 
indeed. Uh, Councillor <laughs> Councillor Thurlow. <laughs> yes, I, I agree just, with you, Dr. Um, Ward. Um, I was I was about to ask if there was any information about how successful it had been because um, I was very impressed with it and I went up in it. I thought it was amazing and uh, I just wondered how amazing it had been and how successful it had been. Um, I have found this, which is a town map. And oh. I picked this up somewhere locally. Um, that one produced by the Traders Partnership. Yes, I think it was. I think it was. And it's got a, a layout of the town. Yeah. Can't see it because it's um it's going all blurred, but uh, it's called Shop Little Hampton. That's right. It's the Traders Partnership map. It's yeah. very good. Um, can, just very briefly, the wheel has been um, successful and that's why the operators wanted to extend it through to the end of April, uh, end of September. And uh, um, yeah, it's been it's been a good draw. Excellent. It's been a win-win situation for bringing and keeping Peter in Little Hampton, but also for the operator. Excellent. Excellent. It's good news. Perfect. And that positive news, we will move on to uh, uh, 7.5, which is Keystone Centre or update. I will read the claim my interest and hand over to the. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Um, and very briefly, as uh, Mike uh, reported on this during uh, his update and presentation, just to confirm that uh, we've appointed an employer's agent and he'll deal with the technical and contractual project management services for the new centre. Um, the contract for this role um, hopes to be signed shortly. And in the meantime, the architects have been working with the district council regarding the validation requirements for the planning application and a brief for the outdoor leisure facilities. Um, and that's just a note, Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. That brings us to item eight, which is the finance report, uh, 8.1. And I will hand over to... I'll take that if I may, Chair. Julia. I'll start then. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is the uh, periodic report on uh, the budget update for the first and second quarters of the current financial year for the committee. Uh, and as ever, any uh, variances from the budget have been highlighted either in this report or in other reports there. Um, the main point uh, to note and where we do need a decision from members is regarding uh, Southfields. Um, and that's just to say, as previously mentioned, we're hoping that by the end of uh, this month, 60% of our groups would have returned. But um, as we've already mentioned too, the climate for hiring is challenging and looks likely that it's going to be for the rest of the year. Previously, um, the committee had agreed to hold bookings um, of our regular hires until September to support those groups. Um, but as this week's announcements have shown, social distancing rules are very changeable um, and to allow us to respond to changing requests uh, on an operational level, um, we're seeking authority uh, to be delegated to the town clerk to allow him to deal with these requests on a case by case basis rather than hold them up. Um, Uh, that's for members to um, approve. Agree. Agree, yeah. Agree. Agree. Agreed. I, I don't know if the town clerk has anything he wishes to add. I do. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Um, the um, I've promised uh, the, the Property and Personnel Committee uh, uh, when, when we met that I was going to say this to all committees because um, this committee, when it looks at its finances, thinks we're doing, we're making, we've got loads of money here. Things are good. Um, I'm, I'm just going to remind councillors as we loom towards budget cycle that whilst things in the financial sense, not in terms of actually delivering things, but in the financial sense are good on this committee, they ain't elsewhere. Um, and so whilst for this year, we're the, the, the lack of events has counterbalanced the loss of income from investments and the loss of income from room hire to a large degree. The future's not so not so rosy. Um, and 
because it is unlikely that room hire will pick up at the same speed as members desire to get the events back running again next summer particularly. Um, and that's not a bad thing, it's just a fact of life. So I am just um, going to report to each committee when we get this, because I think now is a good time to say it in September, even though we're not into budget round, that things are OK this year, but we'll need, we need to be careful before committing to major expenditures into the future. We need to be bearing in mind the unknown and it is an unknown. We really don't know what the world's going to be like in May next year. Um, if only we'd known 12 months ago what we were going into, then things would have been a lot different. But uh, so I am going to just keep reminding each of the different committees. The main two that are under the cost are policy and finance and property and personnel, because that's where the investments and 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 room uh, and uh, room hours are for the manor house. Here it's hidden because of the event side. So the, the Southfields impact is hidden. So, uh, but that's that's my tale of gloom to bring down the high spirits of the meeting and uh, try and end on a much more somber note. I love the idea of the town clerk taking over the role of the finance officer and actually they're the ones who are usually the prudent voice and spreading gloom and doom on uh, on financial matters. But thank you, Peter. <laughs> It's not my natural forte, Chair. <laughs> OK, so if there are no questions on the finance, we will. Uh, the next item is exempt business. Now, there is only one item, which is to approve the accuracy of the exempt minutes that we held on the 23rd of July. Uh, so if members are happy that they are accurate and can be approved without discussion, we, we don't technically need to go in. We can just agree them without having to come out and go into a different meeting. So I'm just going to ask if, if members would be happy if they've read the accuracy, because it is only about the accuracy of the minutes, if they're happy to agree that the minutes are an accurate record and that I will sign them at a later date. Agreed. I would be, I would be abstaining. Agreed. If no one else is, then that is still, still general assent, yeah. Okay. Perfect. So that is general assent and that makes it a life a lot easier. So I will then declare the meeting closed at 7.47 and a thank you as always to all the staff who have worked to make the meeting possible and to members of the public and press if there are any watching for their patience. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Well done, Chair. Thanks. Thank you, Chair.